Good day everyone and welcome back to Poser's Full Movie Recaps. Our story today is about a high-stakes poker game where the players have to bet years of their life, so it's either they win and gain years to live looking younger, or lose years and end up a dying old man. It begins with a woman reading a tabloid newspaper when her husband rushes into the house and shoots up the stairs without even glancing at her. The man is frantic as he quickly goes into the bathroom and stands in front of the mirror. He appears to be quite a young man who is around his mid-twenties, but watches as deep wrinkles form, his eyes cloud over, and his hair grows thin until he stumbles backward into a glass cabinet and collapses. His wife races upstairs at the sound of shattering glass and quickly throws open the door and screams at what she finds. The strange death caught the attention of Sammy and Dean who are experts on solving unexplained and supernatural cases. The duo poses as CDC agents to view the deceased body at the morgue, and the medical examiner opens the morgue drawer to reveal an obviously elderly man. Only she says that he is 25 years old. The woman anticipate their disbelief, so she further explained that she ran the DNA twice to confirm it was the same man who according to his records, was born on April 3, 1984. To make sure that they are investigating something supernatural, Dean calls his friend Bobby to relay what they learn. And Bobby suggests checking out any possible missing persons in town to see if there is a connection. Bobby is like a father figure to the brothers who recently lost the use of his legs, so Dean asks him how he is generally, clumsily trying to inquire about his predicament. Of course, Bobby realizes this and calls him an idiot before hanging up on him. Later, the two visit an elderly woman's house to ask her questions about her missing husband, Cliff Whitlow. She shows them a picture of Cliff and tells them that she knew something was wrong when her husband didn't come home last Tuesday, as he used to follow a rigid routine. Dean excuses and asks if he can use the bathroom, but in truth, he snoops around the house to search for any clues. He finds a receipt from Madame Lou's Golden Palace in the missing man's jacket, and figures that the missing man has been checking in at the local hotel every Tuesday. Sammy and Dean proceed to the palace and figures out Cliff's favorite room inside. As they are about to pick the lock at the room, they hear a loud yelling from the man inside so they quickly bust down the door, only to discover a fit young man in bed with two beautiful and equally young women. Initially, the two think that they got the wrong room and are ready to leave, when Sammy recognizes the young man's tattoo on his forearm, similar to the photo that Mrs. Whitlow showed them. He then asks the man if he happens to know anyone named Cliff Whitlow, but the young man unconvincingly denies it. Sammy checks his wallet from the bedside and finds that it belongs to Cliff, so the brothers ask the man to send the two women out for privacy. Cliff frantically begs them not to tell his wife, because as far as she knows, he's dead already. Sammy and Dean ask him how he can possibly be Cliff Whitlow, and blackmail the man that they will tell his wife, unless he explains how he's so much younger now. Cliff gives up and reveals that he won a game of poker at a bar against an Irish guy named Patrick, but instead of betting cash money, they play for years. When the brothers ask for clarification, Cliff further explains that this Irish guy comes up to him at the bar and invites him to play. He gives him 25 weird poker chips and chants some mumbo jumbo over them, and when he wins, the 25 poker chips become 25 years added to his life thus making himself younger again. He adds that the guy says that he doesn't stay at one bar as he likes to keep moving, so Dean decides to call and ask Bobby if he hears anything like it before. Bobby tells them that according to his records, there is someone in the lore called the traveling card player that pops randomly into town, and it goes back centuries. The rumor says that if you beat the man, you get back your best years in life. Sammy and Dean split up to cover more area since there are numerous bars in town, and they are under a time constraint. In one of the bars, Dean bribes a bartender for directions to the poker game and finds a location of one. As he heads towards it, he runs into Bobby who arrives in town unannounced and already played the game. Bobby sheepishly admits that he bet his remaining years and lost, so now he is more doomed to die sooner than anticipated. Dean angrily calls him an idiot, and Bobby answers that they are his years to do with what he chooses. Inside the bar, Patrick flirts with a woman by demonstrating his ability to read people, which he claims that is not mind reading. Dean interrupts and discreetly shows Patrick that he is armed, and the man comes along with him quietly. In a private room, Dean demands that the he which restore Bobby's 25 years of life while threatening him with a pistol. Patrick coolly refuses to give the years back, as the bullet is useless and will merely tickle him when shot. He offers that if Dean really wants some life years, they can just play a game to earn them back. Dean agrees to play and cash out 25 years for Bobby up front, where Patrick chants at the chips to return Bobby's lost years. When Sammy returns to the motel room, he is startled to find an old man inside and almost shoots him. The old man introduces himself as Dean, who loses another 25 years, making him appear to be in his late 70s. When Bobby shows up, 
Sammy watches them bickering over playing and losing the game. He laughs and comments that they look like grumpy old men, which irritates the two. Suddenly, Dean has a hard time breathing and thinks that he is having a stroke, but Bobby says that he's not. Instead it is acid reflux because of the meaty and greasy cheeseburger he's eating. Eventually, the three conclude that the poker chips are the key and that they should steal 50 for Dean to get back his years. Before they leave, a young woman comes from housekeeping and Dean tries to flirt with her, but the woman thinks that Dean is adorable, which amuses Sammy and Bobby. Later, while the trio secretly shadows Patrick, he gets hit by a convertible that will surely end his life. Surprisingly, while the car driver is rushing to get help, Patrick stands up and steals the car as if nothing has just happened to him. They follow him to a high-rise luxury apartment and sneak after he leaves. The problem is, the elevator is out of order, so Sammy and Dean have to climb the stairs, and with Dean's current predicament, this isn't an easy fleet. When the brothers reach the apartment, Dean sees the safe and starts to break into it, but unable to do so with his failing eyesight. Sammy shoves him aside and steps in to crack the safe, but as they are collecting the chips inside, a woman shows up and uses her telekinesis power to restrain the boys. Turns out the woman is Patrick's partner named Leia, and as she is about to hurt the brothers, Patrick arrives to stop her and adds that they are just harmless men. Patrick let them take the chips as he explains that the incantations are just for plywood and showmanship, and the true power comes from the 900-year-old witch magic that he has. He adds that the only way to get back Dean's life essence is to win them off of him. Dean is eager to go another round, but Patrick regards him as old, easy prey, and he's not a murderer, and comments that Sammy is welcome to try. Dean orders Sam not to, so Patrick extends his best wishes for Dean's twilight time and allows them to leave. As they go, Patrick announces that Dean's already punished, but Sam needs a parting gift, so he stares at Sammy and claps three times but refuses to tell him why, saying that he'll find out soon enough. Outside the building, Sammy starts pulling at his crotch, and Dean realizes that the he-witch gave Sam the clap, aka gonorrhea. The next day, Sammy expresses his desire to play, but Dean and Bobby tell him that he's not good enough at playing the game. Bobby, the acknowledged best player in the group wants to try again, but Dean insists that he doesn't have enough years to spare. Bobby then bursts out that he's got no reason to keep living anyway and that if he wasn't such a coward, he'd have offed himself the day he got home from the hospital. The brothers are shocked by Bobby's demeanor, and Sammy declares that they will find another way, and he will not let Bobby play again. Sammy then leaves intending to find it, and when Dean and Bobby return to the motel room, Patrick's girlfriend Leia is waiting for them. She gives them the instructions for the most powerful reversal spell you ever laid eyes on, saying that it will restore everyone who isn't dead to their original condition, including herself and Patrick. Bobby points out that her giving them this information doesn't make any sense, and she counters that she has her reasons while fondling her locket. At the bar, Patrick is playing with an old man named Ash and is holding a pair of kings. When Ash bets all his remaining chips, Patrick feels generous and folds despite the strong pairs he has, and let the man win a total of 13 years. When Sammy comes up, Patrick tells him that Ash is now going to live to see his granddaughter's bat mitzvah, which baffled him by this apparent altruism, but tells Patrick that he wants to play anyway. Meanwhile, Dean and Bobby start working on the reversal spell and find themselves digging a murderer's grave to get a jawbone. Dean whines about his various aches and pains, and Bobby tells him it's sciatica which is normal with age, so he should just keep digging as they don't have plan B. Dean digs as they insult each other and continue bickering, where Bobby calls him a crybaby and a grandma. Patrick asks Sammy if his big brother knows he's playing, but Sammy stays quiet and didn't answer. He then continues to poke at Sam's little brother status, saying that he's not treated as an equal but he's still trying to clean up Dean and Bobby's mess. Leia comes in and distracts Patrick who asks for a short break, so Sammy takes the toothpick Patrick had been chewing and gives it to Dean to be used in the spell. When Dean and Bobby start the ritual, they are upset because the spell doesn't work. At the same time, Patrick reveals to Sammy that the toothpick he took wasn't the one he had been using and begins to choke the man telekinetically. Leia stops him in time and confesses that she gave them the spell, which stuns Patrick, and decides to continue playing the game with Sammy, who wins a poor hand by bluffing. Patrick acknowledges his skill but vindicatively informs him that Dean is going to die within the next few minutes. With the new revelation, Sammy tries to leave but gets stopped by Patrick, declaring that the game isn't over until he says it is. Meanwhile, Bobby and Dean head back to Patrick's apartment in search of his DNA for the spell, and Dean goes inside the flat. He calls Bobby on his cell when he has trouble finding anything suitable for the ritual, but eventually spots a used wine glass that would work, but collapses before he can reach it. Sammy is obviously upset over his brother's plight and Patrick mocks him about it. 
Sammy then shoves all his chips in and Patrick matches his bet and reveals a hand to two aces, joined with the community cards to make a full house. Sammy notices Leia's sadness and plays it off as if he actually lost, but he trumps it with pocket fours and a pair of fours in the community and cashes the chips in for Dean. At the same moment, Bobby is frantically trying to get Dean to respond to him on his cell phone, when Dean suddenly comes bounding out of the apartment building and is restored to his proper age. Before Sammy leaves, Patrick compliments his prowess at poker and his bluffing skills, then proceed to talk to Leia as she opens the locket. It shows two pictures inside, one of an infant and one of an elderly woman, saying that both are of her deceased daughter and that she misses her family and can't go on, although she does love Patrick. He reluctantly plays her for all her chips and wins with the king and queen of hearts, and as Leia ages before his eyes, Patrick begins to weep as he watches her die. Back at the motel, Bobby expresses disbelief that Sammy won, but the younger man says that he just got lucky. He heads out to nowhere in response to the look that Dean gives him, and admits that he's going to get a booster shot for the clap Patrick gave him. Dean apologizes to Bobby for calling him an idiot, and admits that he'd never stop complaining if he were in Bobby's situation. He says that Bobby hasn't ceased to be a soldier just because he has been injured on the battlefield, and no matter what, Bobby is family and he and Sammy don't have much of that left. Subscribe to watch more videos like this. You can also hit the notification bell and like the video to help the channel out, thank you.